Assalamu alaikum and Dokri uh, Gyecho, everyone. I'm back again. I threw on my uh, an all white hijab today just uh, just because I felt like it, but uh, I decided I'm going to try my hand at something completely different. And uh, I have a couple of books that I bought online, you know, when I was first learning about Islam and, uh, you know, before I even ever thought of converting, but uh, I bought one book that is uh, called uh, a, a Comprehensive Guide to Halal Food Products in U.S. Supermarkets, and I'll hold it up. Don't know how well you could see that, but uh, this is I'll just open it up, see if I can maybe get a close-up of some of the text, but... What it does is it lists certain brands, some brands I'm familiar with, like the national brands of various food products, and uh, some brands I'm not familiar with, and then it has three sections on regional specific stores that are not even anywhere close to uh, Des Moines. But it has three categories in most of the listings here. I'll just flip to another page. And there's... There's the word halal on the left hand side of the page and in the middle let's see if I can get this hard to ha angle it up to this camera with the way that it sits on my flat screen monitor but in the middle column is halal if no alcohol is used as an ingredient or used in the flavoring. And then, of course, the third uh, column. It says not halal. In other words, uh, it's haram. So you avoid those completely. And then the ones in the middle, you are a little more careful about. You have to uh, try to decipher uh, certain ingredients and things like that but uh, it has you know, a lot some processed foods like it mentions craft uh, macaroni and cheese dinner or uh, potato chips tostitos doritos and things like that and uh, but what it leaves out at least for me is some things that I like to buy, like canned fruit or, uh, you know, a certain uh, certain other uh, foods that are really only available here in the Des Moines grocery stores. For instance, uh, Hy-Vee brands, you know. It mentions very little on soups or, uh, you know, canned pastas or... Uh, frozen meals like banquet frozen meals or uh, you know things like that so I thought this would be a lot of help to me but it really hasn't done much but uh, I'll tell you that you know it's published by Muslim consumer group for food products and uh, it's a paperback And it has an index in the back for uh, for reference, but uh, that uh, that's uh, pretty much my thoughts on that book. So, what it does signify for identify it as halal for a certain products is if it has certain kosher related 
markings on it. You, you know, you can use certain kosher products if they have those uh, specific markings on it, and uh, or you avoid certain others if they have certain uh, markings on it because certain, you know, sometimes kosher and halal don't always coincide from, from what I'm finding out. But uh, that's my thoughts on uh, that book, and uh, so I'll kick this video off and. Uh, so if you're looking for a little help on uh, trying to figure out what's halal and what's not, you know, it's a start, but it's not the answer because if it had every single food product, it would probably be as thick and as large as the Gutenberg Bible times 10. <laughs> so I'll be back with another review because I have another book I want to tell you about. So see you in a few shakes of a cat's tail. <laughs>